Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Thornton and I'm the Nurse Management Consultant of the Surgical Order at Aspings Hospital Central Australia Health Service. I've been asked to give this presentation to provide a little bit of insight in the challenges patients and clinicians face in the remote setting. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we stand on today, which is for me is the Aranja people. I would also like to pay my respects to elders past and present. The Central Australia Health Service delivers healthcare to approximately 50,000 people, which equates to roughly 20% of the Northern Territory population. However, the service covers 64.7% of the Northern Territory, which is about 872,000 kilometres, square kilometres, sorry, and also incorporates some remote communities in South Australia and Western Australia. The Central Australia Health Service covers in total approximately 1.3 million square kilometres of land. Whilst the majority of consumers live within the Alice Springs region, approximately 60% of our consumers, a further 7.5% live in Tennant Creek and the remainder are based in remote communities or outstations. Some of these remote communities are only accessible by unsealed roads with very limited services available within the community. Some communities have a nurse-led clinic while uh, some of the com smaller communities rely on neighbouring clinics for their healthcare. The Alice Springs Hospital is the main public hospital serving the region, encompassing 207 acute beds, including general surgery, paediatrics, mental health, renal and orthopaedics. This map demonstrates some of the remote communities we provide service to, including Kintour and Unbladowich. Kintour and Unbladowich do have an independent health service, but referrals are often received from these areas. This map only incorporates Northern Territory communities, but we also receive patients from communities such as Kiwikara, which is in Western Australia, and Fregon in South Australia. Some of these communities can be up to seven, six or 700 kilometres away. As the hospital for a vast area in the middle of the country, there are some unique challenges for patients presenting with fractured neck and femurs. On average, the Alice Springs Hospital treats approximately 35 patients annually with a fractured neck and femur or other associated hip fracture. Many of these patients present from communities difficult to access by road. The Royal Flying Doctor Service, in collaboration with the Medical Retrieval and Consultation Centre, or known as MRAC, retrieved many of these patients to Alice Springs uh, for management, often facing weather and logistical challenges. There are some communities, for example, Docker River, which is near the Northern Territory w WA border, um, which is extremely difficult to access following heavy rains. In addition to the challenges brought by the weather, there are logistical difficulties that must be overcome to safely retrieve the patient to Alice Springs Hospital. It takes time to mobilise flight crews to retrieve patients, and this can result in delayed presentations to the acute service. It isn't as simple as sending out an ambulance. There are many kilometres that must be travelled to reach the patient. Community clinics often have a small staff with a minimum of two nurses, but often without a medical practitioner. Community clinics sometimes have Ab Aboriginal health practitioners which can, who can assist or alternatively second responders or community members often with little or no medical experience. Once the RFDS crew retrieve the patient and they are transferred to Aspen's Hospital, the complexities just start. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have complex medical histories and oftentimes are not medically optimised for a major surgical procedure. This can include complex cardiac presentations, uh, progressive renal disease and uncontrolled diabetes. Our Springs has the largest renal dialysis unit in the country and these patients require a multidisciplinary disciplinary approach. It is imperative comprehensive medical histories are obtained prior uh, preoperatively, sorry, and medical optimization occurs prior to surgical intervention. Whilst there is not a geriatric specific surgery at our uh, service, sorry, at our hospital, patients presenting with fractured neck and femurs are joint care under the medical and orthopedic teams to ensure pa safe patient outcomes. The decision to proceed with operative management is not straightforward for our Indigenous patients. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have complex family and kinship systems where the decisions for treatment 
often require input and discussion with multiple key personnel. Family may not have been able to travel with the patient from the remote community. So sometimes it can take a day, a couple of days to be able to get family in. It then depends on if it's the right family member to make the decision. Family meetings are often held with the support of Aboriginal liaison officers, social workers, discharge planners and allied health staff uh, are common um, to ensure transparency around goals of care and expected outcomes. This is, decisions are rarely left to the patient alone and it can take time for those decisions to be made. The Aboriginal liaison officers are an invaluable in providing cultural brokerage and language assistance within the Central Australia Health Service. There are many different languages spoken within the Central Australia region, including Walpuri, Arandam, Pitinjara. The inclusion of family and Aboriginal liaison officers helps in ensuring the patient and their significant others are able to make an informed decision and provide informed consent for operative management. If operative management is decided as the most appropriate treatment option for the patient, the post-operative phase is the next challenge for clinicians and the, fa the family and the patient. Following a fractured neck of femur, the patient may require extensive physiotherapy to regain strength and mobility in order to have a safe discharge back home. The Aspring's Hospital does have an acute rehabilitation service, um, which is limited to 10 inpatients, uh, where they have access to daily physiotherapy, occupational therapists are also involved to ensure um, to ensure appropriate, appropriate strategies for going home are achieved. However, Aboriginal patients do have a strong connection to land and country and prolonged hospital stays away from country can cause emotional and cultural strain. The Central Australia Health Service faces a unique phenomenon known as taking own leave where patients choose to leave the hospital without informing healthcare providers. The reasons behind this are typically multifaceted and very complex, but being homesick is one of the common reasons we see. The home environment itself, particularly in regard to remote communities, can prevent additional challenges that, that will, will stall a safe discharge. Ensuring appropriate equipment is available within the home is part of the occupational therapist's role, and it is challenging when considering the facilities available. Patients may sleep on mattresses on the floor. They may not be running water or a local clinic to assist with wound dressings or follow-up appointments. There may be limited capacity to install handrails or ramps when required. It is sometimes not possible to achieve the ideal situation that we may see in inner city uh, environments, but that is the reality of where our patients live and that's we have to figure out how to work that into, our, into their care. Seemingly insignificant considerations need to occur. So things like mobility aids that are appropriate for a community without tarmac roads um, and wheel size on wheelchairs and walking frames that are going to be able to cope with the off-roading that our patients do um, out bush. Although we face a unique situation here in Alice Springs, our landscape and our patients bring a special kind of diversity. As an organisation, the Central Australia Health Service works tirelessly to close the gap and to ensure we deliver safe patient-centred care in the middle of the country. Our Aboriginal patients live on country and we work hard to promote a return to country, but it is certainly not without its challenges. I hope this, this very short presentation gives you some idea of what we see out here in the middle of the country. Um, acknowledgements to the Australian and New Zealand Hip Fracture Registry for asking me to provide this um, perspective for our city friends and acknowledgements to the Central Australia Health Service and the Royal Flying Doctor Service for providing images for their presentation.